and uh, Sarah McLeod, welcome to Noise11.com. Uh, Hi, Paul. Thank I, you very much. I guess like, much like most uh, musicians, uh, 2020 was a bit of a write-off, uh, but it's good to see 2021 is uh, getting a bit of activity uh, with uh, a touring schedule for Sarah McLeod popping up suddenly. Yes, and this is the third time I've rescheduled this tour, so I'm um, really hoping that we actually and that it's, it actually goes ahead. I'm sure it will. I mean, you know, what do I know? But um, and if for any reason it doesn't, I'll just reschedule it again because I've just got so used to going. Okay, it's not going to work. That's all right. We'll make it this day. And then we put all our eggs in that basket, and it gets close, and then we go. It's not going to work. That's all right. Let's put the eggs over here. And I feel like I'm just walking around with these little baskets of eggs, trying to work out where to place them. <laughs> so if you're hungry. I've got all the eggs. <laughs> <laughs> good to know. Good to know. I was uh, I was rather surprised uh, that that first Super Jesus uh, album and when you well not even the album when you first got to, together with the Super Jesus was nearly 27, 28 years ago now. Yes, yes. You know, I was thinking that on Saturday night because we were at a, we played at a show in Adelaide. And I was standing there and, you know, I've been playing these songs for so long now that they play themselves. Like I, I, I nod off sometimes halfway through the song and I'm, you know, thinking, what song even is this? I don't know. And I'm still like there furiously playing going, oh, it's that song. And I was looking around, you know, while we're all on automatic pilot playing and I'm thinking, how do we do this? How, how is it that we are still here all these years later, still playing these damn songs? Like, I, I don't know how we've managed to pull it off, but I feel very lucky that that that's the case because I certainly didn't think that that would be the case when I first started even our old manager said to my mum be prepared they've got five good years in them try and make as much money as we can and then they're going to need to find another job and I'm still going I'm like 48 I'm still going <laughs> it's amazing isn't it like when your first record came out if a, if a child was born that day that child could have children now what a great analogy <laughs> Yeah, I could have grandkids. Those kids could have grandkids for the amount of time I've been in the business. When a child is born. <laughs> <laughs> I bet that's a song that's never made one of your set lists. Not yet, but, you know, I do audition the old Christmas carol once a year. <laughs> I don't go very far, but I, I look at them. You never know when the Maya Music Bowl will be calling. Oh, Paul, like, if they ever ask you, can you let them know? I'm keen. I love Christmas carols. Every year I wait for the Maya Music Ball to call me, and they never do. I see everyone else, even Ella Hooper's doing it. I'm like, what the heck are Moops is on it? What? I'm looking at my TV. And, why, why aren't I at the Maya Music Ball? I love Christmas carols. I'm not kidding. I'm into it. And <laughs> you know what? Every year when I watch the, uh, the Christmas carols, I think that Dennis Walter song really needs a Sarah McLeod duet with it. There you go. See, there's something missing. I knew it too. I know. Well, we'll tell them. Let's tell them. <laughs> so uh, going on the road uh, with such a, a, a wealth of back catalogue now, you know, the uh, uh, four Super Jesus albums, I think if you've, you've had three or four uh, solo albums yourself, uh, quite the catalogue there, uh, which must mean quite the difficulty in putting a set list together, I would imagine now. Yeah, it is, it is difficult. And, you know, I always want to play the new songs, so I have to always remember that you know, I've got to play the songs that people want to hear. So I've got to kind of get a nice balance. But um, on this particular tour that I'm doing, I'm doing two sets. So I'm playing a really long show. So I'm, I'm getting quite a lot in there. That'll, that, that'll be good. You've got uh, bits and pieces from both the solo years and the Super Jesus years. How different are your solo Super Jesus songs to when you played them with the band? Oh, well, I'm playing them on piano. So they're completely different. I've rewritten them for piano. So that yeah, there's, you, know, you can recognise the melody, but the, the guitar parts are totally different. <laughs> but that's what I'm doing. I've decided because I learnt piano while I was um, during the break, taught myself piano, and then I I wanted to go out and do a piano tour, um, and my agent said you've got to do the electric show that we we keep moving. Like I know in your brain, you know that was last year, but you still got to do it. So I was like, okay, well I'll still do it, but I really want to do a piano show. So I put myself on a support. So I'm going to support myself and do a set playing piano. And um, I'm thinking I might even wear different clothes and everything, like two different me's. And then I'll go away and come back and do a rock show. Well, that could be an interesting uh, show to go along and see. Will that be Sammy Scream supporting Sarah McLeod? 
<laughs> Maybe we could put Sammy Scream on before Sarah McLeod and then have Sarah McLeod on piano and then Sarah McLeod rock, just to really confuse the issue. Then I can get in all the back catalogue. I don't have to play it all night. <laughs> I hope they're into yeah. it. <laughs> you've uh, you've gathered up the occasional uh, platinum award over the years. I can't see them on the uh, on the wall there. Where do you hide them? You can right there. Ah, oh, just behind me. Above the um, above the piano. <laughs> yeah, it's my little nook. That's where I work. I love it in there. It's so snugly. Put all my pretty lights on, and I just sit at the piano. Hey, I'll show you. It's like a, it's like a studio built into the home. Yeah. I just sit here and I have this little swivel chair. So I go between the desk and the piano so I can like record and then play. And I tuck myself in this little corner. So my back's in the corner because I like that. Otherwise I feel like someone's going to come and stab me in the back, even though I live here by myself. <laughs> Paranoia about always getting stabbed in the back. Um, but yes, so it's good. I, re- I recall you uh, telling me about that that piano at one point in the past. So that's the that's the baby grand that you uh, you acquired uh, what was the story behind how you acquired a baby grant? Um, well, that's that's a different one. But um, when I was living in Woodend, uh, I've decided I wanted to play because I just think they're really sexy. Baby grants are the most attractive looking thing. I used to stare at guitars. I used to every time I get a new guitar, I would stare at it more than I would play it. And then I my fascination shifted to pianos. So I thought if I'm gonna make an effort to play the piano, I should get a really good looking piano so that I want to sit at it. And um, I, thought I just found one online on Gumtree. I don't know anything about pianos. It was like a kawaii baby grand. And I just rang this like, little old lady and she's like, yeah, I've had it for you know, 20 years and went, great. I'm sending over a truck. It was like four hour round trip in this truck. I was like, must have this one piano. And I loved it. And it turned out it was actually a really quite a rare, beautiful one. It had a really lovely warm tone. And then I came to Brisbane and it was just really expensive to bring the piano. So I thought I'll just, I'll sell it and I'll get another one. And so I, I bought one with Yamaha. It's a bit of a story. I bought one with Yamaha and, but I had to have it on back order because, you know, things weren't coming in from Asia. And so in the interim, they lent me this, which is actually like, have a look at this. It's actually, hang on, I'm going to see if I can show you this. It's an electric piano. Oh my God, my socks are on it. It's so bad. Sorry. It's an electric piano, but it looks like a, like a baby grand. So hang on. It's really, really cool. I don't, like everyone should have one of these because look at this. Even if you don't play the piano, you should have one of these because it's also, can you see here? Yeah, it's also a stereo. And you Bluetooth it and the music, can you see that? The music <laughs> comes out here in these speakers. That's like incredible. It's, un- it's amazing. So I can sit here and like Bluetooth music and it comes out of the piano and I can play along. And the, when I play, it comes out through here. It's totally cool. These are amazing. So I've had this for about um, four months now, and apparently my other piano is ready and should be here. It was actually supposed to be here today, but I just got a call from them saying that they can't fit it up the staircase. <laughs> so I'm not sure what I'm going to do now. Yes. What about those guitars on the wall? How many of them are stars in their own right that have appeared on your platinum-selling records of the past? Oh, I tell you, there is one hero... The main hero is the first guitar I ever got, and it is my favourite guitar of all time. And it's this brown one here, this brown 73 SG. It's got a strap hanging off it because I was just playing it. But um, this was the first guitar I ever bought. And for some reason, I cannot find another one like it. I've, I've bought four, five, five SGs over the years that are the same year, the same wood, the same pickup configuration and everything, and none of them sound like that one. Now, all the others are really pretty. They're like cherry red and black and a, a tortoiseshell one. That one's just this sort of ugly poo brown, but it's the OG and it's the best. I don't understand because I don't know enough about guitars, but I've taken it to guitar people and gone, I want you to make this guitar sound like this. What do I have to do? And they're like, mm, well, it looks the same. You know, the wood's the same, but just, just, I don't know. But that one, it's mint. It's just, it sounds beautiful. It holds its tune really well. It's got a really rich, tight tone. Put that in with a, a vintage Marshall JMP. Like you don't even have to touch the knobs; just turn it on. You're like, "Yep, cool." And what uh, what what records has that played on? Oh, every every record I've ever done. Wow, it's my main squeeze. 
Yeah, and that acoustic behind me there, acoustic on the wall, that has traveled around with me for the last 20 years. And it once got lost in, in Canada, Air, Air Canada lost it. And I had to come home without it. I thought, okay, I've lost it. I bought another guitar and I just started living my new life with my new guitar. And then a year later, it was on my doorstep with a, like a um, air freight message and we found it and here's your guitar a year later like no real explanation I was like I felt so bad because I went back inside to the new guitar and I had to explain that the old guitar was home and I felt like those ladies who you know their husband would go to war and they would think that the husband's dead so they remarry and then the husband comes home and goes baby I'm back and they go fuck I've actually started dating someone else I felt like that so I had to explain it to the new guitar and I even went to the trouble of selling the new guitar. I got rid of it. I was like, I don't, I only want one and I want that one. And that's the best one. But now we're back together again. Wow. That was a very dramatic explanation. I, I'm full of dramatic explanations. Yes. Sorry. How long have you got? <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh, it's because I got onion in my eyes. <laughs> I would, have, I would have thought the, the drama uh, sort of suits you well now, doesn't it? Because in recent years, you've also become an actor in, uh, in The Green Day, American <laughs> Idiot. What a great segue. I did. I did. I did American Idiot. And then after that, I did Jane Eyre, which was, like, unreal, amazing. And I think we're going to tour that again. So it was, you know, Charlotte Bronte's Jane Eyre. We did that here at QPAC in Brisbane and... I wrote the score for it and I was playing piano and I played five characters in it. So when I wasn't on stage acting, I would run out the back and get a different outfit on and run around the side and sing and play the piano and run out the back, get a different outfit on, go back on and play a totally different character, five different people. I was an old man. I was a baby. I was a, a, an insane person. Um, I was a, I was a um, cleaner. I was a nun. It was like, whoa, man. <laughs> it was cool. Well, that's the best story I've heard since the weekend when I had lunch with Murray Cook from The Wiggles and he was telling me how he used to be on stage as Muzz and then run off stage and put on Dorothy the Dinosaur and run back on stage. Oh, yeah, cool. Hey, we wear many hats, us entertainers. <laughs> it's a tough life. Well, when you've got a short attention span, it's actually really good to jump from character to character. <laughs> like in real life anyway, this time I just get paid to do it. <laughs> yes. Let me prattle off a few dates. This is starting on the 5th of March in Ballina and pretty much Queensland. Well, you're going over to South Australia as well. Um, South Australia, Victoria, New South Wales and Queensland. So uh, quite the tour coming up, Sarah McLeod. Yep, quite the tour. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be great because this is I've never tried this whole two-step thing before and I get to try all of the things that interest me rather than just one. So it will be musically fulfilling and it'll be entertaining for everybody else because it's, um, it's quite eclectic. So you won't get bored. So after this tour, uh, well, well, we know uh, the Super Jesus is uh, still an active thing whenever you want it to be. Uh, what's happening with Super Jesus and then what's happening with recording? Well, we are writing new songs at the moment. Uh, we are very slow. So I don't know when the record will be ready, but we've, we've got a, you know, a handful of songs so far, they're really good. Well, I think they're really good. Um, so does Ruddy, so that's, <laughs> that's a good start. Um, we are doing a tour later this year, but it's not announced yet, so I'm not supposed to talk about it. But, yes, we are still very much active. Well, good to see. So uh, after 2020, at least we will be seeing a lot more live music from you in 2021. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm touring the whole, the whole time, pretty much. And then there's a few months in between where um, I'm hoping to sketch out some studio time to go and record some solo tracks and some Super Jesus tracks um, if we can get them ready in time. Looking forward to it. Thank you, Sarah McLeod. You too. Thank you, Paul. Thanks for having me. Good to see you again. <laughs>